um, sell buys going into tomorrow, right? Uh, obviously, the CPI number is going to dictate. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. A lot to talk about. I apologize, there was no video last night. I was so tired uh, just because of all of yesterday's action. I was so tired. I don't even remember yesterday's action just because of all of what happened today. As always, guys, I want to thank you everybody for um, your uh, contrib contribution to to what we do, your support of what we do. Again, if you could be so kindly and just hit a like, right? Hit a like and support the channel, like, share, uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, done so. And we will appreciate and continue uh, hopefully giving you a lot of value in the future. So let's talk about today, right? Uh, you go all across the board. Uh, you got 2% plus declines in all the major indexes, right? Uh, a lot of news uh, to obviously digest. You look at the Dow down 650 points today. Uh, you look at all the things that investors uh, and traders for, for that matter um, have to kind of uh, digest tonight. Today and the whole things you have midterm elections, uh, very, very too close to call to see who has control uh, of Congress. Apparently the market did not like that uh, and started really selling off today, especially in the afternoon. You have, you know, you have all this craziness going on with, you know, Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin under 17,000, the whole saga with FTX. Again, I only heard about the name, you know, I'm not in the crypto space. So I only heard about this FTX only a couple of days ago when they started betting heavy on coin uh, to the downside. So apparently there's a big fallout, right? With this whole FTX uh, cryptocurrency exchange, which is basically taking Bitcoin and all the other coins uh, you know, pretty much to the woodshed, which is, uh, you know, pretty scary because that, again, um, you know, it, it really shows you where the speculation money is. And again, it's something I always say all the time when retail, okay, is in the same space at the same time uh, and looking for the same results. Usually, you know, unfortunately, usually bad things are going to happen. Again, you, you could go through so many things, you know, the dot com area, everybody, right? Dot com, easy, easy money, easy, easy money. Uh, then years later, right, you have all these, you know, cryptos and NFTs. Again, everybody's going to get rich. Everybody's going to get rich. Everybody's going to get rich. Um, NFTs, so forth and so on. So, you know, you, you, can, you can reference like names even like in the stock sector, like AMC and GameStop. Again, everybody's in the same thing at the same time. And unfortunately, it really is a musical chair when there is speculation money in anything, in any asset class. And unfortunately, a lot of investors and traders are seeing uh, the ramifications. Again, I try to give a very unbiased uh, opinion every single day. Again, in my opinion, as I've said through every single broadcast is completely irrelevant, um, completely irrelevant. You know, uh, everybody has an opinion, everybody thinks it's gonna happen, but thinking what's gonna happen is not high probability. The stock market reacts versus technical analysis and data and news, obviously a catalyst for a lot of things to come. And speaking of which, we have a very, very big number uh, going into tomorrow is the, the the CPI, the inflation you know readings to see to kind of give us another clue of what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen down the road? And you know, if if you believe in craziness, right, and you thought today was pretty aggressive to the downside, well, I can't. I think the market's going to turn around to us tonight and say, well, hold my beer, wait till we see tomorrow. And the reason why we say that, if you look at September's uh, CPI, and again, we we know how you know pretty bad the economy is. Uh, we went down 1,200 points, right? If you look at October CPI, we gapped up 500, went down 300, then rallied 800. So, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, right? We we, we absolutely don't know. I, I you know I don't know. You know, people ask me all the time, what do you think is going to happen next week? I couldn't tell you what's going to happen 15 minutes from now, let alone next week. Again, we have data. We use data from the previous night's research. Like today's close is giving me data for tomorrow, right? The the only thing I I, I don't know what's going to happen is after the CPI number is going to, you know, is going to be released. You know, again, at some point tomorrow, we either going to be looking at, you know, a Dow up 500 or down 500, right? So it's very, very tough to say, well, I'm definitely having my watch list. I'm definitely watching those stocks in the watch list and they're going to play out. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But again, this is what we say all the time. Uh, it's best to be, uh, it's best to be prepared. And again, as you can imagine, I'm, I'm sell buys going into tomorrow, right? Uh, obviously the CPI number is going to dictate 
completely something different, right? Let's tomorrow at 8.30, you know, the, the market go up 600 points. I mean, who the hell knows? And that's the whole point. It's the unknown. But again, prepare, 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 and wait for confirmation. And again, I said this every single day. You could be wrong theoretically, right? Like I'm sell buys going in tomorrow, and we'll talk about the levels and why. Um, but if you know, if but if you're not wrong financially and just kind of not anticipating what's going to happen tomorrow, then you'll always be okay and learn uh, to fight another day. Um, I, I thought today was a very weird day. Very, very weird day. I, I, you know, I knew going into it that might be at least, you know, for the first part of it, it might be a little bit slower just because, again, you know, we're waiting for the results of the midterm elections a little too close to call. And, you know, traders are kind of assessing and kind of brainstorming what might could happen tomorrow uh, on the inflation report. And the market today for the first, I would say, first three and a half hours did absolutely nothing. Like it really, really didn't do nothing. Like look, every trade that we were taking was like was going down like 50, 60 cents. And I was like, oh my God, and, you know, we're trading stocks that normally have an eight, 10, $12 average true range. And they're, they're sitting there for like, like Amazon, I shorted Amazon today. It was sitting in a 50, 60 cent channel today for like three hours. It was, it was absolutely amazing. And the, the most part of it was like around lunchtime, I turn around and go, ah, you know what? You know, let's wait for tomorrow, right? Let's wait for tomorrow. I'm going out for lunch. I'll see you guys in an hour. And when I came back in that one hour, everything that we were watching absolutely imploded. So I, I literally missed every big level today because every little, every big level started today literally at lunchtime and just continued. And by that time, I'm like, look, I'm not going to start chasing uh, lower prices. So, you know, I took a cup of coffee today. Uh, very disappointed uh, because I, I literally left and Tesla went down eight um, the Qs went down like three. I mean, like everything, like Amazon finally broke down. Apple finally broke down. My, so whatever, it was kind of one of those days that, you know, it was just, if I just stayed for an extra five minutes, five minutes, um, I would have participated in the afternoon. But again, you can't uh, do everything. And again, I, I, have this, I have this rationale that, you know, God gives you, right? God gives you what you're supposed to get. Not, you know, not more, not less. So uh, sometimes you get everything, sometimes you get nothing, sometimes you're the pigeon, sometimes you're the windshield. And that's kind of how the market works. So uh, let's talk about some key levels today, right? Uh, everything is getting shelled. First of all, let me talk about Tesla. We've been talking about Tesla for, for a while now. We talked about over the weekend video, it broke down, lowest support. I mean, they, they are coming, right? And yesterday, we finally got our answer who was selling. Elon sold about $4 billion shares, $4 billion, excuse me, uh, of Tesla shares. It continued today, just absolutely destroyed. Uh, we saw today 170, 160, 145 uh, short-term expiration bets with a lot of capital behind it. It wasn't like retail guys, you know, betting 800 bucks, 1200 bucks you know, a couple of grand, you know, they were coming in for a ton of size, short-term expiration, 170 weeklies, 165 weeklies, next month's 145s. I mean, this thing looks, it looks broken. It looks really, really broken. Um, and, you know, again, I love Tesla. You know, I, I traded on both sides, but boy, oh boy, investors of it are definitely, definitely uh, holding a pretty heavy bag right now. And we'll see, we'll see what happens uh, as that story uh, unfolds. But technically, we, we, did, we did lose some uh, key levels. And the first one uh, I want to talk about is the Qs. Uh, and again, it doesn't seem like a lot. Qs were down, you know, NASDAQ was down like two, two and change today, two and a half percent. The most important part of what we saw here, what we've been seeing uh, on the NASDAQ front is, again, they never rallied, right? If you've been watching this update just in the last you know, two, three weeks, the NASDAQ never rallied with the rest of the market as, as the S&P and the IWM and the Dow were really, really cementing, at least for a short term, uh, above the above the 50 day moving average, uh, the queues kept on getting rejected. That was very, very important to understand. And then they started taking down some key levels. We've been watching this video, this 270 70 level, this 272 level. And then today, and then today, yesterday they got stuffed at the 10 day moving average. And today it lost the five day moving average. Again, if you're if you're if you are brand new to this channel and not familiar with the five day moving average, the five day moving average is the shortest term sentiment. It's not supposed to be gospel, it's not supposed to be set in stone, but whoever has control of the five day will probably there's a high probability that it will get pulled or pushed into the next supply or demand zone and if you look here and this is the whole point of the ps60 theory stocks trade from demand to demand so if if the queues confirm and again unfortunately for us you know there's you know there's always a possibility that the queues you know they just gap down six seven points you know what i mean so you know, I made the watch list today. I, like, I definitely like some names, but I'm just, I'm just really afraid, and I just have this really weird feeling 
that our watch list is going to get burnt literally at, at the CPI number, and then we have to kind of switch to you know, Plan B through uh, Z. But uh, the whole the whole point is, if we, we do kind of have like a, a staggering oh, staggering report, and the market just goes up and down, up and down, up and down, then we have, we'll have a shot at the bottom ranges here. If you know Qs start losing the 63 level here, and we'll get to the individual pivots today. But if Qs start losing this this 63 level, there's a shot we get to this 258 level uh, on the on, on the Qs. If you look at the spiders today, right? If you look at the spies, exactly the same thing. You know, you know, it lost the 50 day moving average, lost the the 10 day, the five day moving average, and this is the lowest close in this whole formation, taking out th two days worth of buying. Uh, if we get it, start building below uh, 373.60, and again, you know, this is all up in the air. On the CPI number, but this thing starts losing at 363, uh, 373, 60, 373 level. Uh, there's gonna be more downside to come. And the Dow, you know, that's the one, you know, in, in a weird way, that's the one that's actually holding up uh, better than the rest. You know, here's the 50 day, we're way still above it. I uh, traded today to the 510, but the diamonds start losing the 325 level tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, the diamonds are gonna start uh, heading lower. So, yeah, I mean, look. We're definitely sell bias tomorrow. We'll, we'll see what happens, right? We'll absolutely see what happens with the CPI. Uh, tomorrow evening, we could be talking about little, literally like, hey, you know, the CPI took the market up 600, or hey, the CPI took the market down 600. So again, we just have to prepare and see exactly what happens. The one thing that we do have control of is our game plan, our emotion, and our ability to be a professional, right? To be an adult, to sit there and wait patiently for everything to play out. What we don't have control of is news, uh, events, and data, right? We don't know what's going to happen and nobody else knows what's going to happen. So if you're trying to handicap, what do you think is going to happen? All I got to tell you is look on, look at September CPI, it went down 1200. Look at, look at uh, October CPI, we went up 850. It was exactly the same thing. Nothing has changed materialistically in the economy. Nothing has materialistically has changed in the Fed. So again, flip a coin, right? Here we go. I got, I got a dime here. Flip a coin. Heads is good. Tails is bad right to be determined so let's talk about uh let's talk about some pivots today and again i'm very frustrated about what happened today it's just like everything collapsed as soon as i went to lunch so i'm a little bit peed off so anyway let's talk about it um you know yesterday coin got destroyed 54 54 20 uh 47 69 if it builds below can flush again they were coming really really aggressively i won't go there um, for the for the for next week's forty dollar puts, right? It got hammered yesterday, uh, and again with all this stuff going on with Binance and FTX, again Coin just continues to get uh, just continues to get just just taken down. Uh, forty seven sixty nine, it traded all the way down to forty four. Uh, Roblox, uh, you know, bad earnings thirty three as monthly uh, support if it builds below can flush thirty two twenty six is the pre market lows and needs to confirm. Here was Roblox. Right here was Roblox. It took out. Here's the whole 33, 33, 20 area traded down to like 31. You know, it's going lower tomorrow. Uh, Apple, you know, Apple. The, the play is tomorrow. I'm praying. I'm praying to the market gods that gives us a setup. I really do. 37.50 yesterday's channel. If it builds below, can flush. Here is Am Apple. Right. So Apple flushes. Apple flushes. 37.50 goes down to the 34s. Guys, watch the bottom of the range here on Apple. They're coming for the 130 weeklies. Like, like it's the last time to buy these contracts. 130 weekly puts. If this thing loses its bottom channel here, this thing is toast. Again, CPI, let's cross our fingers. Uh, NVIDIA, we didn't have a chance to trade it. They just killed this thing right off the open. It went, you know, 141 needs to build. They killed NVIDIA right off the open. Like literally, they killed it right off the open. Went all the way down to 137. I still like it for tomorrow, but didn't have a chance to, to get that. Uh, Q's uh, 266.40 held twice. If it builds below, can flush. And again, that was the catalyst uh, for the Qs. It lost that 66.40, lost that 60, 65, uh, 65.50. Yesterday's low, it took out this range's low. It traded all the way down to 63. Again, uh, prices look lower there. Uh, Microsoft, just a quick little scalp, uh, quick little scalp in the afternoon. I, again, I, I couldn't get anything more than like a 50, 60 cent move. I was so frustrated. Um, you know, Microsoft 225.84, if it builds below, can flush. Their massive buying came in for the February 200 puts. I mean, one down like 50, 60 cents and nothing. Um, I like Roku for tomorrow. I'm still waiting for that. Um, and I was joking around. There was a pivot I put in before I left. I go, guys, watch, you know, watch the one, one, uh, 186 pivot on Tesla. I even put it down. And I, you know, I went to lunch. I go, ah, it's only a couple of bucks. 
And then and when I came back upstairs, it was only eight, nine bucks. So that sucked as well. Um, and that is it. The only thing I, oh, Amazon, right? Amazon, again, I, I shorted Amazon, went down to like 80, you know, 87 12s, 87 20s, and I sat there for like three hours. So I took some off. I covered when, it, when the rep market started rallying. When it came back from lunch, it was like 86. And I went to throw up. So anyway, it is what it is. Look, look let, let your worst day be a good one. Let the, your, 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 you know, again, the cost of doing business up a little bit, down a little bit, you know, flat, you know, it doesn't make a difference. It's called the cost of doing business. As long as you are rational, as long as you are looking at the big picture, you're going to be okay. Obviously, tonight, the big story is um, uh, the midterm. We'll see what happens there when, when everything gets... Um, rationalized and then tomorrow the cpi number usually there's not um uh usually there's not a thursday video but since i didn't record one yesterday i was just really really tired tomorrow i will record and hopefully the cpi is a good friend to our setups guys have a great night god bless and i will see you all tomorrow take care